another grade. Um, it's Miss Terry. We're going to read Chapter 4 of The Book Wanderers by Anna James. The chapter is titled Somewhere Adventures Live. The next morning, Tilly was sitting at the kitchen table reading her mom's copy, copy of Anne of Green Gables when Granddad popped his head around the bookshop door. He came and gave Grandma a kiss on the cheek as she simmered gooseberries on the stove, singing under her breath along with the radio. Oscar's here, he said to Tilly, smiling. He said you, you'd promised to help him find a book. Oh, I didn't think he'd come, Tilly said, petting, putting a bookmark carefully in her mom's book and placing it well out of reach of sticky gooseberries. She headed into the shop and saw Oscar wandering between bookshelves, trailing his fingertips along the spines of books. Tilly watched him soak up the atmosphere of the shop for a moment. Have you never been here before? she asked, making Oscar jump a little. I didn't hear you come in, he said sheepishly. And yes, of course I've been in here before. It's when where Mom gets all her Christmas presents. But I'd forgotten how... He paused. Magical? Tilly suggested. Exciting? Beautiful? Yes. But that's not what I mean. It's not that it, what it looks like. It's how it makes you feel, isn't it? It's, is there a word that means somewhere adventure live? Adventures live? I don't think so, but you should be. But there should be, said Tilly. But anyway, Oscar said, collecting himself. It's cool, is what I mean. But I haven't been in for ages, and I'm not up this way that much. We have someone else who looks after the cafe on weekends. And I usually spend the school holidays with my dad. Where does your dad live? In Paris with my big sister, Emily. Oh, wow. I thought you were going to say South London or something, Tilly said. It must be amazing to get to spend the holidays out there. I've never been outside of England. Yeah, I guess, Oscar said. Paris is pretty cool, but Dad got remarried last summer. And Marguerite's, Marguerite's really nice, but now it kind of feels like I'm visiting someone else's home when I'm there. And Emily is always out with her friends, so I decided not to go this holiday. How come Emily lives with your dad? Tilly asked. She decided to go to college there, Oscar explained. She wants to be fluent in French so she can go into university there too. Her boyfriend lives in Paris. Uh, do you miss them, Tilly asked? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I miss my sister more than my dad, I think. Sometimes it feels like I'm in the way when I'm there. Not that I'm not wanted, but it would be easier if I weren't there, Oscar paused. Do you miss your parents? He asked quietly, as though he wasn't sure if he was allowed to talk about them. Mostly it's Almost fine, said Tilly, surprising herself at how comfortable she felt talking to Oscar honestly. But every so often, I can fill a gap where they should be. It's not like that all the time, but I always, I'm always aware of it a little bit. What happened to him? Oscar asked, still looking at his feet. My dad got ill and died, and I don't know many details, many of the details. He had to go work abroad. He got ill. He died before he could come get home. We really don't know what happened to my mom. She left really soon after I was born without telling Grandma or Granddad anything or anyone where she was going. And she never came back and we haven't heard from her since. Whoa, that's like something from a TV show, Oscar said before stopping. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean... It must be horrible. Do you really not know anything? Tilly shrugged. She didn't even know her anything. The police think that the, that maybe she had postpartum depression and she ran away and is living a completely new life somewhere else. They said she might try to make contact at some point, but that I shouldn't get my hopes up.
Do you think that your parent? Do you think about your parents a lot? Kind of. It's funny because I don't really remember them at all. So it's hard to miss them or feel sad about them in a very specific way. It's like feeling sad that you never had a diamond ring or a unicorn. I feel sad about the idea of them and knowing they're not here. And I hate that I don't understand why mom left. But I don't really have any memories of them as real people. I have this though. Tilly pulled out her necklace from her jumper and showed Oscar. The small gold bee was no bigger than the nail on Tilly's thumb. Is that your mom's? Oscar asked. No, it's mine. She just had one, had one just the same. Hers was a present from dad, and when I was born, she made one for me too. Tilly tucked it back into her jumper. The shop phone suddenly started ringing and made them both jump. Anyway, I've never really told anyone else all of, about all of that, Tilly said a little awkwardly. I'm, I'm glad Oscar started, but Tilly cut him off. Let's find a book for English. I need a new one, too. Oscar nodded and followed her up the stairs to the children's floor. Tilly picked out a pile of books for Oscar that she knew were printed on different kind of paper that made it easier for people with dyslexia to read and placed them in front of him with a flourish. While Oscar flicked through them, she went to find a little princess and realized the shop stocked several different editions. She looked through some of the different covers, wishing she had the chance to talk to her mom about the book. She was sliding the various editions back onto the shelf when her after careful consideration, Oscar settled on a slim book with a black cover and a creepy illustration on the front. They took the book downstairs where Granddad put it in a canvas tote bag, stamped with the Pages and Company logo, and refused to let Oscar pay for it. It's a pleasure to have you and Pages and Company, Granddad said. Special offer for friends of the shop. Oscar thanked Granddad and gave Tilly an awkward half wave before making its way across the road to Crumbs. Tilly headed upstairs to her reading nook, but she turned the corner she saw that her sofa was already occupied by a girl with red pigtails. She looked up at Tilly as she approached and sighed dramatically. I know what you must be thinking, she said in an accent that Tilly couldn't place. You're thinking what a dreadful burden it must be for a girl who is already so skinny to be forced to endure ha red hair as well. I wasn't thinking that at all, Tilly said. I was just wondering what you were doing on my sofa. I'm awfully sorry, she said. The girl said, jumping up and haphazardly straightening the cushions. I didn't know it was yours. I mean, it's, it's not really, Tilly said, realizing that she must have seemed rude. It's just, I like to sit here and you surprise me. I hadn't noticed you when I was up here with my friend, with a boy from school. Oh, I knew, I know that feeling, she said, smiling broadly. I have a tree that is laden with the most beautiful, sweet smelling, pale blink, pink blossoms that I would like to read under. The girl's face suddenly morphed into a look of horror. But can you ever forgive me? Forgive you for what? Tilly said, thoroughly flummoxed at the change in tone. My horrible manners. I haven't even introduced myself. My name is Anne, with an E. With an E? Tilly repeated hazily. Yes, the E is so ever important. People are, all, people are always telling me that that name is much the same with an E or without an E. But I think those people are severely lacking imagination. How could you ever think Anne without an E was the same as Anne with an E? It's like saying why, it's like saying that dessert is the same as desert. But there I go again with my terrible manners. I haven't asked, even asked what your name is. Oh, wait, let me guess, you look like a, Emmeline? Or maybe Penelope? Or Cordelia? She's added something hopeful. Sounding hopeful. 
It's just Tilly, I'm afraid. Short for Matilda, Matilda Pages. Why, well, that's a lovely name, and I'm quite envious, Anne said, looking entirely delighted. I'm so thrilled to meet you. Are you looking for a book? That sounds wonderful, thank you, Anne said. Autumn is the most magical time of year for reading, don't you think? She gestured towards this window, which framed only drizzle and gray skies, but Anne reacted as though she could see auburn leaves tumbling in the wind. October is my absolute favorite month. And to bring outside with the sun dappling? Do you think dappling is a real world word, Tilly? I think it must be. Don't you? With the sun dappling, the leaves of a tree, glass of a raspberry cordial at hand, she tailed off, starting dream staring dreamingly into the nothing. Tilly began to find the silence a little awkward, but she struggled to think of something to say, so she returned to her fell safe questions. What's your favorite story? she asked, jerking Anne out of that autumn old daydreams. Do stories you've made up made up count yourself count? Anne asked. I don't think so, Tilly said. I think they have to be well proper stories. A story you've made up yourself is just as proper, don't you think? I, although I suppose it's hard to share with other people unless it's written down, but I do believe telling stories out loud as well. My friend Diana and I have a club where we read each other's stories and offer helpful advice to how to improve them. I must say, though, the advice is mainly one way. Poor Diana doesn't have much of an imagination. Although I love her fiercely, and regardless, I dare say it's good for my soul to blossom, to be bosom friends with a girl who is lacking an imagination. The mention of a friend named Diana made Tilly's brain itch. Something about this girl was so familiar. But anyway, it must depend on the purpose of your story, I suppose. Anne concluded and looked up triumphantly. Tilly nodded supportively, although she wasn't really sure what Anne's point was. Do you, do you know, Tilly started glancing out at the book in her hand, you remind me of, but she was interrupted by a hairy looking man who came up behind them and tapped Tilly on the shoulder imperviously. Excuse me, young lady, I need to pay for this immediately. Do you work here? He was holding a very th thick business textbook. Not really, Tilly said, trying not to laugh as Anne impersonated the man's cross face behind his back. But I'll go find my granddad and he owns the shop. The man nodded curtly. I'll be right back, Tilly said to Anne. I don't trust you to come straight back, Missy. I'll come with you. I have an incredibly important meeting to get to urgently, the man said, and Tilly couldn't be bothered to explain that she wasn't talking to him. She delivered him to Granddad, she took him to the till, but then Tilly went back upstairs, so she couldn't find Anne anywhere. She ran down to find Granddad after the grumpy customer had gone. Ah, oh, Tilly, just the person I was looking for. Don't forget... We need some of your inspiration for the Wonderland party. I've been wondering if we could possibly try to. He paused, noticing how distracted she was. What's up, sweetheart? Did you see a girl come past here a few moments ago? No, afraid not, love. Was she a friend from school? No, just a customer. She seemed nice, I think. I thought she might have stuck around for a bit, Tilly said, but I can't find her. She probably had to go meet her parents, Tills, Granddad said gently. Maybe she'll pop back in later. I'll keep an eye out for her if she comes in. What does she look like? She had rare head, red hair and two plates, Tilly said. It was funny. She actually reminded me of Anne Shirley from Anne of Green Gables. And her name was even Anne, too. Such a weird coincidence. Maybe it's like the owner's. And their dogs, she joked. You start seeing your favorite characters and real people. Although, that's not quite right. 
with the dog thing, is it? She tailed off, noticing Granddad's face had gone pale. Are you okay? Should I get Grandma? Do you need a cup of tea? No, no, I'm fine, love, Granddad reassured her. Just a wobbly moment. I've been on my feet far too long today. For already this morning, I think. I will take you up on that tea, though. I just have to sit down before, here for a moment. I'll be right as rain before you know it. The color was already returning to his cheek as Tilly left to make some tea. That was the end of chapter four. Our next chapter is chapter five, Magic, Mischief, and Nonsense. See you next time.